with this type of um, balancing problem, what we have here is a little different from what we've seen before. This is the first one that we're looking with, looking at that has uh, polyatomic ions in it. The other ones we had were purely ionic compounds. The first reaction that we looked at was, I believe, a, a single displacement reaction. The second was a single displacement reaction. Uh, the third problem that we looked at was a uh, like a decomposition reaction. Um, and this one here we're looking at is like a double displacement reaction. However, like I said, it has polyatomic ions in it. The polyatomic ion that we have in this one is the hydroxyl group. So over here on the product side, we have an OH group. But on the reacting side, we don't have an OH group or we don't have one that's visible. So we need to rewrite the equation so that um, we can see the hydroxyl group. And we're going to balance the hydroxyl group as one unit. So we have Al4C3 plus HO. H. So this hydroxyl group is going to be treated as one unit. Goes to AlOH3 plus CH4. So once we've done that, we've pretty much taken the difficulty out of this particular problem. We then just go ahead and balance it like we would normally balance any other problem. We write our grid. We have our reactant side and we have our product side. And we go through each of the atoms. So aluminum is equal to 4 on the reactant side. Over here, aluminum is equal to 1. So what we want to be able to do is use the common multiple between the two. And we want to put a 4 on the product side. So 4 on the product side. Carbon here is equal to 3, but on the um, product side, carbon is equal to 1. So common multiple between 1 and 3 is 3, so we put a 3 on the product side. Hydrogen, hydrogen here is equal to 1 on the reacting side, but hydrogen on the product side is equal to 12. 3 times 4 gives me 12. Uh, 3 times 4 hydrogen is equal to 12. So common denominator between 1 and 12 is going to be 12. So I place a 12 here. So 12 hydrogens on the reacting side, 12 hydrogens on the product side. So if I then look at my hydroxyl group, I have OH is equal to 12. And then if I look on my reactant side, I have 4 times 3, which means 12, and the OHs are already balanced. So we're finished. I have 4 aluminum on the reactant side, 4 aluminum on the product side. I have 3 carbon. On the reactant side, I have 3 carbon on the product side. I have 12 hydrogens on the reactant side. I have 3 times 4, which gives me 12 hydrogen on the product side. I have 12 OHs on the reactant side. I have 4 times 3, which gives me 12 OHs on the product side. So, that's it. It's balanced. Okay, let's look at combustion reaction. And with the combustion reaction, when we go to balance the chemical equation, the combustion, when you have carbon or hydrocarbon plus oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide and water. Sometimes these are a little straightforward and sometimes they aren't. But we'll go through both examples so you can see each type. Um, again, we have our T. We have our reactant side. And we have a product side, and we go through each atoms. So carbon is equal to 3 
on the reactant side, carbon is equal to 1 on the product side. So carbon denominator between 3 and 1 is 3. So we place a 3 here on the product side. Hydrogen is equal to 8. Hydrogen on the product side is equal to 2. The common denominator between 8 and 2 is 8. So I will multiply the reactant side, or the product side, times 4. 4 times 2 gives me 8. So I put a 4 in front of H2O, which allow my hydrogens to be equal to 8. Now my oxygen, oxygen is equal to 2 on the reactant side, but the number of hydrogens that I have on the product side, I have 3 times 2, which gives me 6 plus 4 which gives me a total of 10. So on the product side, I have a total of 10 oxygens. And as you can see, they are not balanced. So the common denominator between the common denominator between 2 and 10 is going to be 10. So I want the reactant side to be equal to 10. So I end up multiplying this here times 5, 5 times 2 gives me 10, which means I put a 5 here. So when I do that, my oxygens will equal 10 on my reactant side, my oxygens will be 10 on my product side. So my final equation will look like C3H8 plus 5O2 goes to 3CO2 plus 4 H2O. Uh, 3 carbon, 3 carbon, 8 hydrogens, 4 times 2 gives me 8 hydrogens, 5 times 2 gives me 10 oxygens on the reactant side, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 gives me 10. The number of oxygens on the react, the product side are equal to Okay, here let's look at another combustion problem, but this combustion problem is a little different. Um, again, we have our grid, we have our reactant side, we have our product side. We go to each atom, carbon is equal to 6, carbon on the product side is equal to 1. So common denominator between 6 and 1 is 6, so I place a 6 here. Hydrogen is equal to 6. Hydrogen on the product side is equal to 2. The common denominator between 6 and 2 is 6. And I want the product side to equal to 6. So I multiply it times 3. 3 times 2 will give me 6. I place a 3 here. I have 6 hydrogens on both sides of the equation. Um... On the reactant side, oxygen is equal to 2, but on the product side, oxygen is equal to 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3, which gives me a total of 15. So I have a total of 15 oxygens on the product side. So the common multiple between 2 and 15 is 30, but I can make it equal, I can make the reactant side equal to 15 by multiplying it times 7.5. So 7.5 times 2 will give me a total of 15. So I will place a 7.5 here in front of the oxygen, but as we know, or what have we seen earlier, we can't have a decimal number as a coefficient. So C6H6 plus 7.5O2 goes to 6CO2 plus 3.